speak at this very important private member's motion on restorative justice and the issues uh, involved. Um, crime, as we all know, has a very heavy impact on victims, and we must all remember uh, the profound effect that it can have across all aspects of victims' life. Whether that victim is a person, a homeowner, a business, whether there are financial consequences to crime, all victims will suffer some type of emotional impact. Uh, and in discussing the issue of crime and justice, we must always remember the rights of the victim. Uh, Kian Korla, a Minister, when we are dealing with our approach to crime, we must also think about who committed. We must ensure that our justice system provides opportunities for people to put right wrongs that they have committed. And in giving people an opportunity to avoid criminal record, uh, to avoid prison, it can also provide an opportunity to reduce crime rates and in early stage turn people away from criminal activity and, and I think we must all strive to make sure that happens. But in giving people an opportunity to change their ways, we must ensure that there are still consequences. We must ensure that we do not allow people to reoffend multiple times before, that, before the justice system kicks in. It is important that people understand there are consequences to their actions. And I want to thank Deputy Halligan for putting this bill before us tonight and, and for making his proposals on uh, restorative justice. Deputy O'Brien in his very fine speech spoke about restorative justice, but what is it really about, Count Corla? To me, it's about promoting the victim, uh, that the victim, the offender and the community work together in response to crime to prevent it recurring. It's not about condoning harmful behaviour, but it's about communities and supporting individuals while still holding them to account for their actions. The concept of restorative justice is wider than just making monetary payments for losses which arise from criminal events. It is about meeting the needs of victims and it is about encouraging offenders to take responsibility for their actions. The concept should underpin our approach to crime prevention and it should underpin our approach to investigations and prosecutions and it must be the underlying rationale of any punishment that is administered by the courts. Last Saturday afternoon, Minister, as you know quite well, in the city of Cork, where we both live, one of the city's busiest streets, there was a dreadful assault which occurred in broad daylight. Two young people attacked the homeless person. Thankfully, Gardaí were on the scene quickly. The victim, I'm pleased to say, Count Corla, is hopefully going to make a full recovery, and there have been two arrests. Incidents like last Saturday in the city of Cork get much attention, but we must look at the overall rate of crime rather than just one or two high-profile incidents. Winthrop Street is one of the busiest streets in Cork City, and each afternoon and weekend, many teenagers hang out in the vicinity of, of the fast food shops and retail outlets there. And while some people may feel intimidated by the large groups, most of the time there are no unsavoury incidents, and we must acknowledge the excellent behaviour of the vast majority of teenagers. However, last Saturday perhaps highlights the need to provide alternative places for young people to gather, and I believe, Kian Corla and Minister, that there should be engagement in Cork City Council and young people across the city to see if there are facilities that could be provided where young people can gather away from the busy streets but within town, which is Cork City. I know that the Gardaí and Cork are proactive in how to deal with the crime and they respond to community needs and redeploy resources as required. Over a three-year period from 2011 to 2013, there have been 170 incidents on Winthrop Street, on average just one incident a week. So far, there have been nine incidents in, this year in Winthrop Street, two-thirds of these occur at night. This is in keeping with the trends of the last three years, which consistently show that most incidents occur during the nighttime economy of Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And I use these figures in this debate, Count Corla Minister, to reassure people that during the day and even at night, the streets of Cork are safe and that high-profile incidents are a rare exception. At last week's meeting of the Anglesey Street Policing Forum District, which I'm a member of, Gardaí presented to us figures regarding crime, and it showed that in Cork City Centre, theft was down, assault was down, and public offences were down. This downward trend is welcome and must be attributed to the excellent work of the Gardaí in Cork City and the progressive community policing approach that is taken by the Gardaí in Cork, which helps to create a sense of community and responsibility. And I hope, Count Corrick, that this will continue. All crime has victims, and all crime instills fear beyond its direct victim. By having the concept of restorative justice underpinning all aspects of our criminal justice system, we can deliver a system that respects and prioritise the rights of victims, creates a sense of community and offers those who have committed minor offences an opportunity to change their ways and make amends for their wrongs. I look forward to the Minister's proposals 
in the Community Police Community Sanctions Bill, which would provide pr for a proper system of victim compensation and a system of restorative justice for minor offences at district court level. Gormaghlin. Gormaghlin. Uh, Deputy Eamon Maloney. Five minutes. Uh,